Welcome Taurus to your in-depth monthly horoscope for April 2024 for the Ascendant, the Sun or the Moon. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for, but please stay with me. I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. Now we have to be mindful of your ruler and Venus is in a very delicate conjunction with Neptune as we come into this new month, but is squared up by the moon in the free-spirited sign of Sagittarius. So that creates an 811 square. So there could be some issues around your friendship circle as you enter this month, perhaps some uncertainties. If there is someone who seems a bit clingy or controlling, that may be something you're going to want to work through. Now, Mercury, the planet of communication, goes retrograde in your 12th house on the 1st of April, suggesting that some deep thinking or rethinking could go on around your alliances. And you may be thinking a lot more about the psychological dimension of your situation. And that's emphasized even more by the solar eclipse of the 8th. But it's the 19th when the sun hustles into your sign that you get a reflection of the same energy that occurred last year because when the sun entered Taurus in 2023, it squared up with Pluto and that happens again. So something that happened in the third week of 23 could play out again, but I've got so much more to share with you. Please stay with me for more. But if you are new to my channel, Thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please share them. I interact with each comment. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for your company. I much appreciate all your likes, comments, shares, and subscriptions. If you've yet to subscribe, I'm racing towards 120,000 subscribers. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. That means every time I drop a video, you will get an alert. And if you would like to ascend above this Zodiac broadcast and embrace the power of personal astrology, if you give me three pieces of your birth data of time and date and place, or if you don't know your time, date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far, but also a much more intimate understanding of how to work with these energies more effectively going forwards. And in my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit report. That's the moving planets in the sky interacting with that unique blueprint that only you were given when you were born. Please see the link below for more. So Taurus, as you come into April on the screen now, there is your event chart and you can see a big cluster of energy in the sign of Pisces, very much about your friendships, your social connection, your long-term planning, your higher values, can be an area to do with good fortune. And you can see that the part of fortune is conjunct your ruler Venus. So there could be a stroke of luck linked to a group of people or one particular friend. But you've also got a cluster of energy in Aries, which is much more psychological, plus the key combination of Jupiter and Uranus in your sign, which will become exact in a conjunction on the 21st, but as it does, forges an amazing link with Mars. But the big other takeout is the position of the moon because that's squaring with Neptune. And that suggests that as much as one person or one group of people could be inspirational, there could be someone else, perhaps someone you're drawn to romantically, who could turn out not to deliver in the way you were hoping at the start of the month. Now let's think first of all about the role of Mercury because it starts this month in Aries but then later on, on the first day, goes into a retrograde. A retrograde in the 12th house is very psychological. If we think about the 12th house as being akin to Pisces, Mercury doesn't like being in Pisces because it's detrimented, it's watery, it diminutes its logic and its detachment, which it gets from its two other rulers of Gemini and Virgo. So 
you got a bit of a challenge there, to be honest. And then the Sun is aligning with the North Node in your 12th house. That becomes exact on the 5th. And then your ruler Venus moves into that area as well. So quite quickly, three events happen which could test your faith. It's possible because of that conjunction between the part of Fortune, Venus and Neptune, that something quite incredible could happen in a positive way this month. But because of that moon position, what you've got to do to protect yourself is use the moon energy in the sign of Sagittarius, which is a truth seeker, but in the eighth house to dive deep. So in other words, don't take anything at face value. And it's going to be really important for you to understand the psychological dimension of your life, your connection to others, but also your relationship to your own fears and anxieties, which is what the 12th house is about. So Mercury going retrograde there suggests that maybe there are some things or some insights you can gain about uh, the way you look at things that maybe is a bit tough to, to accept. Also, the Sun aligning with uh, the North Node. Ever since the North Node moved, on the 13th, the true North Node, in the 13th of July 2023, into your 12th house, where you had really been attacking things with gusto for a couple of months with Jupiter's help, when Jupiter moved in the middle of May into your sign, suddenly you were finding that things weren't quite accelerating at the pace you liked. Of course, Saturn had moved into your sector of friendship in the March, so there's been a shift that's gone on in the last six or nine months, which hasn't always been very easy for you. And I feel that what we're dealing with this month, particularly by the fifth when Venus moves into your 12th house and aligns with Pluto, you're being asked to really try to understand, particularly your professional connections, who's going to be with you and supportive of you and who's not. Because unfortunately, I think you may have some quite big experiences this month in understanding where you feel in some ways cut off, detached, maybe even a tenderness all the way to abandonment. Twelfth house is very delicate energy. So on the face of it at the start of the month, the bubbly conjunction between Jupiter and Uranus in your sign, the position of all those 11th house planets with the part of fortune with your ruler Venus, but actually because the shift into the 12th house and the emphasis on the 12th house is so quick and it's including very major aspects. So, you know, the sun aligning with the north node is one of the most incredibly important aspects you can have. Think back 18.6 years ago and you would have had a repeat of the same aspect. Um, also, because of Venus moving into the 12th house, that can be about when things come to a natural close in relationships. It can be where we feel more sentimental, more nostalgic. We could reconnect to someone from our past, an old flame, but just be aware of, or just consider why the relationship ended the first time around. But because Venus is in such a powerful angle with Pluto in your sector of success, when it comes to your professional situation, you do need to be aware of the politics. Not everyone is necessarily going to express an open opposition to what you want to achieve, but you may feel the psychological coldness there. Then we get the solar eclipse, which occurs on the 8th. This is conjunct to all but one minute with the wounded healer Chiron. So huge energy this is, and it provides a backdrop for the next six months. If there is anything from your past that is outstanding in terms of hurts, disappointments, separations, betrayals, this is a solar eclipse which asks you to really look them directly in the eye. And that's not easy. It's also possible that you know, if you're in a relationship where you feel your partner is not particularly supportive or psychologically in tune with you, you may start to rethink whether it's the right relationship for you. And there could be a big conversation that goes on in week two, because by then, 
Mars and Saturn come together in a conjunction. That's exact on the 10th. And that's really giving you a, a little bit more strength of purpose when it comes to asserting what you want from your future. And maybe you're going to tease someone out who has not been quite as supportive as they could have been. And maybe that conversation will go on between the 10th and the 13th. Because on the 11th, we have a Kazemi with the Sun and Mercury. But because Mercury's in a retrograde, it's what's known as an inferior conjunction. The position of Mercury lies between the Sun and the Earth. But that really could see some information come to you. You could be told something. Maybe you're going to rethink something from your past. Your psychological awareness can really grow at this time, but it may be a painful process to be really truthfully honest with you. But through this middle part of the month, there are things to be gained because Mercury applies to Chiron. Venus applies to the North Node, then applies to Chiron. Then Venus and Mercury come together. It's possible that you could actually have a conversation with someone that you strongly fancy, but maybe you'll want to keep it confidential between you. Possibly you will start to become more conscious of someone's energy and there could be some nonverbal communication going on, but a lot of fascination. But then when the sun moves into your sign, we get that repetition of the square with Pluto, which occurred in the third week of April last year. So the sun moving into uh, Taurus gives you more strength, more conviction, more determination. Because it's in that square with Pluto, you may find yourself coming into some kind of open opposition with people at work. And perhaps if you have felt disappointed, let down, unsupported in the way that you really wanted because of all that 12th house energy it could be quite a sobering moment of the month as the sun does clash with pluto but by the 23rd you're going to come into your power a lot more because then we have that conjunction between jupiter and uranus but mars in the sign of pisces links brilliantly with them if there are some people that you need to move on from, that's going to be a critical point. Also, Mercury goes direct on the 25th. And if you have been feeling, look, some situations have not been acceptable, even if it's painful, you will have started to accept the reality of the situation. But then on the 29th, Venus moves into your sign. And whatever has panned out earlier in the month, whether it, it is that you have that beautiful connection, which is possible because of the conjunction with Venus and Neptune and the part of fortune, or someone has hugely disappointed you, you're going to really be moving into your power. But it is true that Venus squares, like the sun did, Pluto. And again, there could be some intensity, but I feel that Rather than feeling more wounded or even rejected by how things are, or it could be you that's moving away from something that isn't working for you, you're actually telling someone powerfully what you expect and how it's been has not been acceptable to you. Now, on the very last day of this month, Mars comes to the end of its journey in your 11th house. So if there is a cutting point, uh, in a relationship which you feel has run its course, it may be at the end of this month that it really becomes clear to you. So it's one of the most complex months I can remember for you for a very long time. I must stress it has those opportunities. The 11th house is about your long-term future. If you're very intact psychologically, you're going to be robust enough to deal with this month but you can't control other people. And the 12th house, which Mercury goes retrograde in, which we have uh, the conjunction between the Sun and the Node on the 5th, which your ruler Venus moves into on the 5th through to the 29th, that is the sector in traditional astrology to do with secret enemies. And I think it could be around your professional situation as much as your personal situation that you learn an awful lot about who's for you, and who's not for you. But by the end of this month, even if some things and some people and some interests and some plans 
have to make way and you're heading in a bit of a different direction, you will be back in charge of the process. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Taurus. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do like, comment, share or subscribe.